Hey guys, today we're gonna deploy an app on Amazon Firegate. Let's start with a simple architectural diagram. Today we're gonna be deploying a Python app, which I built in the previous video, you can find a link to that video below. So that is a Python app, which uses Flask micro framework. What it also uses is NASA API, and from NASA API, we pull an astronomical picture of the day and display it to the users through a like, web interface using the Flask server. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to put that app into a Docker container, make sure it runs locally first, then we're going to push it to Amazon Elastic Container Service, and we'll use AWS Fargate. Now, the AWS Fargate image here is much smaller than the last container service and that is intentional because AWS Fargate is, is it's not a standalone thing it's just one of the possible compute engines you can choose from using the Elastic Container Service so again we'll, we'll push our container with a Python app to Elastic Container Service and there we'll employ AWS Fargate as a compute engine this is how our app looks like. The only thing that changed from the previous video is the way I fetch our NASA API key. And there is a very specific reason for that. Because when we run that in a Docker container, we'll, we'll need to somehow pass the value of that key. And Docker gives us two options. We can either pass it as an actual string on the command line, which is insecure, so I didn't want to do that or we could provide it in the environmental variables file. But again, I would need to somehow make that file available to Amazon, and that is just very complicated. So Amazon has service for storing your keys for you, and I'll go through that later, and, and there is also be a link to a tutorial which teaches you to, to pass your secrets to Amazon, but basically now I'm not passing my NASA API key as an environmental variable, but rather I, I passed it to Amazon earlier on using these few commands that you see on the screen. And now I can access that anytime, and that's that. So now we make sure that our app runs locally. Virtual environment is activated if you're using one. I'll just use the standard Flask server to run the app. Again, it's not recommended to use a Flask server in production settings, but for playing around just fine. So I'll just run our app.py. It starts a local web server on the port 5000. I'll just go to that link on my local machine. And here we go. Today, astronomical picture of the day is Aurora Shimmer, Meta Flash. Very nice. Um, again, we pulled from NAS API, we pulled the picture, the image, the, the credits, and some description. And tomorrow will be another picture video, who knows. Now, as we verify that our app runs locally, we want to verify that it runs locally in a Docker container. So here we have this Docker file in our project. All it says, it says install this Alpine Linux. It's very lightweight Linux operating system with Python 3.6 in it. Then, the, so dot means source and whatever is destination. So what we say is we put our current directory, the one where the Docker file is located, into the root and then code directory. So all those files that will go to the code directory of our Docker container. Then we switch to that code directory. Then once there, we install all the necessary requirements from our requirements file. Right, so we need Flask, we need requests, we need Boto to access AWS uh, functionality. And once that is done, we run our command Python app pi, right? That's the way we ran it here locally in a terminal. Uh, that's that, that's the definition of the container. 
now let's build our docker image now we're in our project directory let's say docker build we'll give it a meaningful tag like flask and fargate and then current folder starts building the image downloads the alpine linux and all that so it takes a few seconds Right, installs all the requirements. Now we can see this image in our local repository. That's our Flask and Fargate image. I'll just clean up the screen. And now we run our image. Now we'll just paste the command I built earlier. So here are a few things that I want to go through. Now the problem with passing credentials the way we pass them is that we're using the AWS client. Now that AWS client needs to have the AWS credentials somehow. Once we push it to AWS that won't be a problem because we're gonna be running that code with a role or user that has all the necessary permissions provisioned via identity access management. But now when we do that locally, there needs to be a way to provide our AWS credentials to the code. So the way we do it is we say, so our Docker run, now we want to make it interactive just in case. Now we know that our Flask app starts from port 5000, so we'll map the Docker's port 5000 to our port 5000. Now we say that specify an env environmental variable which would be home and here in docker file we specified that all our files that will go into code directory so i'll do the same i'll just say that the home variable in our docker container will be equal to this code directory and what this does it basically maps it's like volume mapping it maps my home slash dot aws directory to the containers code dot aws and what it basically does it's when we run our code in the container the container by default boto looks for home directory and then it looks for dot aws directory in that home directory and then it looks for the credentials file and because we specified now a Docker container slash code as the home directory, then it will go to slash code and there it will find dot AWS directory. And, and because we mapped the containers dot AWS directory to our local one, it will find the necessary credentials. Right, and finally we specify the tag we want to run and it's going to run the latest version of the tag. Let's see. Good, it started the Flask server because it's interactive, it just outputs all the logs here. I'll just copy that over. Yeah, okay, new tab. Good, so now it runs a container. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm recording this part of the video on a day that is different from the previous part of the video. And that's why we see a different image, which is kind of cool, I think. Okay. Now we made sure that our app runs both locally and in a container. Now let's start moving it to AWS Elastic Container Service and AWS Fargate. Now I'm in my AWS console, we'll go to Elastic Container Service. And it's an interesting thing, if you click Get Started, it leads you through the steps, which I find a bit confusing because you start like from inside to the outside, which is fine, but I'll probably post another video on how to do that. But I find it more straightforward to just go through steps manually. So first we need to somehow push our Docker container to Elastic Container Service repository. So click repositories. Nothing is there, we create one. We'll call it flask on 
Fargate AWS repository. Also, it's, you know, we're giving a name to a repository, it's still called repository. It pays off in the long run because when you're dealing with many, many services, you really want to know which one is a repository, which one is something else. So I would recommend that naming system. I will go to that repository and we need to push our Docker container there. And it gives you this nice little cheat sheet, which will follow through. So first we'll run this command. So we'll retrieve the login credentials for Elastic Container Registry ECR. Um, open new tab. Right, and then we execute that login command. Yeah, okay, so we logged into Elastic Container Registry. Then once done, we build our Docker container once again. We could have used the image we built previously, but I just want to show you that you can just follow through the steps. Now again, this dot assumes that we are in a directory with a Docker image, uh, sorry, Docker file and we are in that directory. Here we go, right, that would docker file. Now we run this command. We'll take a few seconds. Okay, after the build completes, tag the image, so you can push the image to this repository. Yeah, now we'll tag it with this crazy tag. So running, okay, okay, tag, uh, run the following command to push this image to the newly created AWS repository. Whoa, 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 okay, docker push. Take some time. I really like how those errors are working out. Looks very sophisticated. <laughs> Close. And once the push is successful, this image should appear somewhere here. Now the push is successful. We go back to the console, fret the page. That's our image in the Elastic Container Registry. Good, so we define the container. Now let's get back to Elastic Container Services. Now the idea of a cluster, right? Our containers, they should run somewhere. We create a cluster. The one powered by AWS Fargate, finally. We'll just create an empty one. We'll call it Flask and Fargate Cluster. Yeah, let's create a new VPC for that cluster. We'll default tags, we'll skip it. Create. That takes some time because it's that squad of your resources are being created under the cover. And done. Let's view the cluster. Now we've got the cluster. Now there is also the idea of a task. So the task runs in a cluster and then the task will pull the container or the image and whatever, launch it. We go to task definitions. We create a new task definition. Again, it's a Fargate. Next step, we'll call it Flask. 
on Fargate task. Um, okay, rule. I already created one rule for this task and it has to do with those credentials I mentioned before. So basically that rule allows this, this task to access uh, that private key that decrypts whatever the, the variable, the encrypted variable. Uh, it looks like this, but as I said, there will be a link to a tutorial on how to set it up. I just didn't want to focus on that for now. We keep the default network mode. Yeah, so that is the role connected. Um, the role I just mentioned. Now task size. We have like really lightweight app, so I choose the very minimum of we could possibly choose. Here, here, that's where our container steps into play. Add a container. Container name, and I forgot to. So here we need to reference the image we just pushed into the registry. I'll just go quickly here. Go to Docker Container Registry. Oh yeah, man, we already did that. Um, repositories, Flask and Fargate repository, image URI. So that's what we want. We'll go back. So yeah, add container, container name, Flask on Fargate container. Right now the image. We'll just keep that for now. Default, so we'll just roll with default. Now remember that the container will set a flask cap, which will run on port 5000. So we wanna tell AWS that we won't have access to that port. We don't need any of that for now. We'll just leave the default. Yeah, all that. Read only room, mount points, volumes, auto config, source, okay, like, okay, we're good. Create. Good. Now, so what we did so far, we pushed our Docker image to the repository registry, we created a cluster, and we created a task. Now, we'll run the task. Again, yeah, quite a few steps involved. So we say, yes, it's Fargate again. That's our cluster, right, the one we spent created earlier. It's one task. Subnets will oh, use the defaults. All right, and then upon the creation, our task will be assigned a public IP address. Right, and then we also specify the, the port mapping of 5000, so that's how we're going to access it. Good, let's run the task. Now we'll click through to the task. The public IP address is still not available because it's still being like created. Oh, okay, it failed for some reason. Let's see why. Okay, I figured out, I think I figured out what the issue was. We'll just try running the task once again. Once again, Fargate. Cluster number task, cluster C, subnets, which is subnet, 
security groups all good I think the problem was with this tagging so basically it allows Amazon elastic containers uh, elastic I fucking forgot what we were talking about elastic container service to basically apply tags but I think that the role I'm running this whole task with it doesn't allow that policy so we'll just uncheck that and hopefully that should run through fine okay provisioning let's see if it works out refresh right now it's running exciting if we go to our task there will be a public IP address display hopefully fingers crossed I'm literally posting my fingers right now if I go to that public address and then port 5000 we should see our flask gap running And the magic did not happen. Oh, okay. So our app started, which is good, but somehow we cannot exit. I think the problem might be okay, task, task roll. Let's look into this elastic network interface. Right. Let's see if if we have the right permissions to access it from the outside world on port 5000. Inbound. Okay, so it allows port 80. 80. Okay, basically, there is nothing that allows inbound traffic on port 5000. That's why we cannot access it. Good. Um. We'll just modify the security group. I think last time, uh, I don't remember, we'll just modify the security group. We'll add another rule which would allow HTTP traffic on port. Now the changes to elastic networking phase take effect immediately. And here we go, it worked. Oof. Very good. So yeah, always remember to check your inbound rules because very often that could be a reason why you cannot access your app. And here we go. So our app runs as a task on AWS Fargate and because we asked AWS Fargate to you know attach a public IP address to it that's the one we used here and yeah so we're using port 5000 we can access our app also remember to make sure that you have all the right inbound rules specified as it turned out and yeah, that's how you run a app on AWS Fargate. Comment below if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Right now our task is running and that is available to public so I can share that link. Nice. Hope it was helpful.
you enjoyed it to an extent. And yeah, take care. See you in later videos.